Hi, my name is Methat Al Masri. In today's tutorial, I will describe the steps you need to follow if you want to use code first migration to seed both users and roles in ASP.NET. The seeding will be done inside of the on model creating method of the entity framework DB context class. In order to proceed with this tutorial, you need to have the following prerequisites. You need Visual Studio Code. You must have .NET 6.0 installed on your computer. And you also need to have the .NET EF tool installed on your computer. We will be starting off with the ASP.NET Razor Pages application. So let us get started. At first, we will create an ASP.NET Razor Pages app and the command for that is .NET new Razor. We will use individual authentication so that we can get a database that is ready to be used and all the packages that are needed for that. So I'm going to use individual authentication with the switch minus minus auth individual and we're going to use the framework .NET 6.0 and the output directory will be code first users roles. Of course, you can call it whatever you want to call it. We're going to go into that folder, which is code first users roles. And let's run the application with .NET watch. This is what the page will look like. Now we can register a user with, for example, I'll create a at b.c and a password. And you'll get this screen. You can click here to confirm your password. Now I can log in with that account, which is a at b.c and the password. And at this point, I should be logged in. Let's log out. I will stop my server with control C and open my code in VS Code by typing in code dot. Now, the database is this app.db because SQLite is being used here. I need to create a class in my data folder, which I will call model builder extensions. So new class model builder extensions. Now I will be creating an extension method here that belongs to the model builder and will seed for me my roles first, then my users. I want to do the roles first because once I do the roles, then I can add users into the roles. So this class will have all the logic for seeding the data and I will replace it with this code. Let's first resolve these namespaces. Now all the namespaces have been resolved. So you can see that this is an extension method because it is static and the argument is this model builder builder. So this is an extension method for model builder and it's called seed. First thing we do is we declare a password that I'm going to use for all my users. And of course, this is not done in the real world. In the real world, you don't put the password inside of the code, but this is for demo purposes. Then I have this password hasher object that is of type identity user. This is the object that will be used for hashing the password. The first thing I do is I create an identity role object, and then I set the normalized name property of that object to be the name converted to uppercase. The next thing I do is very similar. I do the same thing for member. I create a member role and I set the normalized name also to the name converted to uppercase. Then I add to a list of roles, the admin role that was created here and the member role that was created here. Then I add this to the database, basically. Next, I create an admin user. All of this code is just creating an admin user. So I set the username to be this email address, the email to be this email address. I set email confirmed to true. And I set the normalized username to be the username converted to uppercase. I set the normalized email to be the email converted to uppercase. And this is where I set the password hash to be this object that I created up here, the 
password hasher and I hash this password for this user and I do pretty much the same for another user which is the member and I add both these users the admin user and the member user to a list of users here I add this to the database now this part here is where I associate a user with a role. So here I'm associating the first user, which is aa at aa.aa .aa, with the role of admin. And then I associate the second user, which is mm at mm.mm with the member role. And this is added to the database. So this is all the seeding that needs to be done to create two roles and two users. But of course, this seed method has to be called from someplace. We're going to call it in the on model creating method of the context class. So this on model creating method is an overridden method. At first is going to call the base classes on model creating method and pass it the builder object. Then we're going to use this builder object to call the extension method seed and that's where this method seed gets called. There's one more thing we need to do in the program.cs file. We've got this section here, add default identity. This needs to be replaced. So I'm going to comment it out and replace it with this code. It's going to call the services add identity method of type identity user and identity role here in the options section, you can add options pertaining to the length of the password, the complexity of the password, and the, for example, in this case, maximum length for keys, which is 128. And this is important here, your registering identity role, so it's available in the rest of the program. You're adding default UI and adding default token providers. Now, having done this, we should be able at this stage to create some entity framework migrations. Let's start from scratch. So I'm going to delete this migrations folder here. I'm also going to delete the app.db file, which is the SQLite database file. So let us add a migration. So the way to do that is .NET EF migrations add and I will just call it M1 and the output directory is going to be data slash migrations. Now if you go to the data migrations folder and open this file at the very top you should be able to see that there is some data that's being inserted in the tables like here there's the first role that's being added and this is the member role followed by the admin role then we're adding user aa and user mm so this is going to be executed the moment we run the next command which is dot net ef database update in my vs code i do have an extension that has to do with SQLite. It is this one here, Explore and Query SQLite. This allows me to take a peek at the data inside of my SQLite database. Now with that extension, you can right click on app.db and say open database, and you get this section here. I'm going to expand it, and let's just have a peek at the roles. So I'm going to say show tables on the ASP.NET roles, and you can see we have some data in the roles table. And let's do the same in the users table, show tables. And you can see here that my users have been populated in the database. At this point, we want to log in with some of the users that we created and maybe use some of the roles that we have in the system. So let us start our application, .NET, watch. And here we go. Let me log in now with a user. So I'm going to enter aa at aa.aa .aa and the password, log in, and there we are, we're logged in. So I will log out. Now in this application, we actually have two pages. We have the home page and we have the privacy page. Let's assume that we want to secure the privacy page. So what do we do? We'll go to the privacy page, the code behind, and at the class level, we can add an annotation 
authorize. Of course, this has to be resolved. Now, if we try to go back to our application, of course, you can see now because we're in the privacy page, it says it tried to go to privacy and it's secure. But the home page is open to everybody. The privacy is secure and it's secure as far as authentication is concerned, which means that if you're authenticated, you can go to this page. So I can check now. Let me try the other account, mm at mm.mm and the password. If I log in with that, I'm into this page so I can go to the home page that is open to everybody and my privacy page is open only to authenticated users. If I log out and I go to privacy again, it will ask me to log in. Let us try to restrict this a little bit more. Going back to the privacy page, suppose I want to restrict this only to users that happen to be in the member role. So I'm going to type in roles here equals to member. Now let's see what's going to happen. So if I go home, it's open to everybody. Privacy, you have to be a member. Let me try to log in as the administrator. If I'm logged in as administrator, according to the rule I've set out here, only members can access this page. So I have to log out and log in as a member mm at mm.mm and now I can go to both pages. Suppose you want to restrict this page to more than one role. I can do that too. I can say that member and admin are allowed to this page. Let's try that again. So I'm going to log out and previously when I went to privacy and I logged in as administrator, it did not allow me. But now we're saying both members and administrators are allowed. So I'm going to go aa at aa.aa and the password. And let's see how I can get into the privacy page. Thanks for coming this far in this video. I hope you benefited. And if you found it useful, please give the video a thumbs up. Thank you and see you in the next video.